Hi there Heartland owners. Today in your 2018 Heartland Torque, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Furion's three camera trailer system. This includes your left and right cameras as well as the rear camera with a seven inch display. And currently we're looking at the rear view camera here. Um, if we select on the screen, that'll allow us to select which camera we want. So if we want to see it on the left side of our trailer, we can click that and see it on the left side. If we want to see it on the right side, we can click that and we can see it on the right side. Go ahead and hit our door. This is an additional camera slot that you could add in the future. A lot of customers use this to watch their entry door. Um, this is for kind of when they're set up at their campsite. We can also touch the screen a second time to pull up an additional menu here where you can choose view all. And this way you can see all the cameras that's hooked up to it at the same time. We'll go ahead and hit the screen twice. If you touch on one of those cameras, like if you're in the view all mode, if I touch this, it's going to pull that one up. So that's why it changed there. Let's take a look. If we hit it again, you can see here on that second menu option down here, you've got your volume controls for the system because the rear view camera does have a microphone in it. So let's go ahead and go to the rear. So we can hear the phones ringing back there through our camera there. Turn that up even louder. We can just get some kind of static going on there. You can mute it as well if you don't want to hear it. That can be really useful if you're backing your trailer up. You know, you've got all these cameras to help see around you, but you might be in this crazy tight spot and you still got a spotter back there. Um, he can be behind the trailer and you can turn that volume up and you'd be able to hear uh, his guiding instructions while you're backing up. So it's kind of nice that it's got that there as well. On the side of our unit here, we've got our menu button there for some additional options. So we're going to go ahead and click that button. <clears throat> here we have our options to pair our cameras. They're already paired. Most of the time they come pre-paired, but if they don't, you can pair them here in the menu. When you select on a camera, um, like for example, the door cam there, if I were to click that, it would tell me to press the pair button on the camera, and then you would just simply press the pair button on the camera. If we go back into our menu, we have our setup here where you can, you know, change your screen refresh rate, your motion detection, if you want to have an auto off, you can also mirror the image, which some people want to do sometimes. They want to mirror the images. So you have that option as well, and you can do that for each camera individually. So we're going to go ahead and go back. Here we have our picture settings. You can choose each camera individually to adjust those. We'll just go ahead and pick the rear, select our color, and you can see you can increase or decrease the color for that camera. And then down here at the bottom, you just have your version history, so nothing crazy there. Uh, just get some idea on the firmware for the software. If we run over to our camera, I'll show you the pair buttons on those. So if you're trying to do this at home uh, and you're just not sure where the pair button is, let's go take a look at those. On our side cameras here, the pair button is located on the bottom. And here you can see the light letting you know when the camera's powered up. We got our tail lights on, so that's why the lights are lit up here. And when you press this button, it's very hard to press. I'm not going to lie. You got to press that button. If you don't hear it click, you didn't press it. Uh, so you you almost got to like dig your fingernail down in there to hit that little tiny button. So just keep that in mind. If you're having troubles pairing it, you might not actually be pressing the button all the way. And then we'll head to the back camera. Uh, it's got a similar button, but it's in a little bit different location. And if we look at our rear view camera here, you can see the Furion F. If you just follow that down to the bottom side of the camera, you'll find your pair button located there. I wanted to take one more look at this rear view camera. Um, if we take a look at this here, I did a little bit of a modification to the lens on the light that's just below the camera. If you were looking at it before, you might have saw that we were getting kind of a red blowout from the tail light that was positioned directly below where the prep for the camera was located. So when we put it in there, we kind of got a blowout. Uh, I took the lens off for that center light. And I just put some black electrical tape on the inside of the lens, just right at the very top edge. So we're not blocking any of the lens where it's facing the back of the trailer that anybody would see, just that top edge there. And that helped to reduce uh, the red blowout. You can still see just a little bit of it there, but uh, it did make a pretty big improvement um, on the clarity you'd have on that rear camera. Another thing I wanted to show you guys too is that this does have night vision. All the cameras have night vision. Uh, we're going to switch to one of the side cameras um, 
just to make it easier to show off here because we got it right next to us. So you can see that our screen here currently, it's a nice color image because we are in a nice well-lit area. I'm gonna cover up the light sensor on the camera. And I heard the little click, it turned on the lights on our display. And you can see here that it has gone to black and white for that low vision mode that we are in. And it just switched back because I moved away from it. I'm no longer blocking the, uh, the light sensor. And lastly here, I wanted to show you, we've got a couple of different mounts before we get into our truck. Uh, you've got your suction cup mount here that you could put on the front windshield of your truck. That would make things a little bit easier for you to see. This is also gonna be a nice secure mount. This one here is just like a dash mount uh, for sitting on top of the dash. Um, it's a nice little mount here. Um, I think this is more suited for an RV than it would be for like a truck, just because RVs usually have a pretty big area on the dash where you can put some stuff. It's got some rubber feet on the bottom to help it from sliding around, but honestly, if it was me, I would use some hook and loop fasteners to secure it to your vehicle so that way it can't move around because this is definitely gonna slide around. You know, the, the rubber feet help minimize how much it's gonna move, but it's definitely gonna move because of the, the weight of this thing. I mean, it's gonna vibrate when you're hitting on gravel roads and stuff. So just keep that in mind. I would probably put some Velcro on this uh, or go with this option here if you just, you know. This one here I think is great for the trucks. I think this one's less useful for RV guys because sometimes your windshield's just so far away. That screen might be so far away that the you know, little tiny image by the time it's that far out from where you're sitting. So I'd like to give you a couple options um, just so you can use those, whichever one works best for you. So here we are in our truck. So I wanted to show you guys the trigger wires. If you select the view all where you can see all of your cameras, we're gonna turn on the right blinker. So that's our right camera. And it pulls it up full screen for us. We turn off the blinker and it returns us to all of our camera images. Here's our left camera. We turn on our left blinker and it turns on our left camera for us. So it's again, really useful when driving down the highway, especially when merging lanes, you can see pretty much all the way around the back of your trailer here. And then you get that full screen uh, for when you want to merge or turn um, by turning on that turn signal thanks to those trigger wires we installed. Those are optional. You don't have to install those, but if you want, the, if you want it to automatically select the camera by activating your blinker, that's how you would do so. So here we are on our test course. We're just going over the bumps course here. Just wanted to kind of show you off the features. We can choose our rear, our right as well. You have the option to manually select these. Uh, so if you wanted to have just that camera up for a while, while maybe it's important for a certain turn or something, you need to focus on that side. You can select those. You don't have to just use the trigger circuits. And it's nice to be able to see the rear camera when going down the road, especially if you're doing any kind of tandem pulling or if you've got some kind of cargo carrier bikes or anything back there that you want to keep an eye on. You can keep an eye on those too. It's uh, nice for when you're driving down the road as well. Before we begin our installation, we want to do some checks on our trailer. And I would recommend doing this before you even purchase any parts, just to get an idea of the best system that's going to work for your trailer. So the first thing you want to do is plug in your truck and just operate your lights to see how your lights operate. This is going to give you an idea of how you're going to need to wire it. Most common, this is just going to light up with your tail lights and that's going to be it. And that's fine. That's actually the most ideal setup, but you want to see if it blinks. It's possible that they could have wired this up to be a blinker. Uh, if it's a blinking circuit, that just changes how we're going to wire it a little bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's a good place to start and you know, this is most common. So we're going to be wiring ours as if uh, you have a tail light circuit here, but we'll talk about it if, if it would be a turn signal here, just in case that's what your trailer does have. We're also gonna head to the back to look at the back camera to see if you have the prep package that works with the system. If not, there's a better system, so you won't have to do so much modification. So here we're at the back of our trailer and we're looking up at the lights that go across the top. You see the three lights in the middle there? Just above the center light, there's that black plastic housing that's there. That housing is a very similar shape to the camera that comes in this kit because that's just a housing that's to protect the area that was prepared by the manufacturer to use, to use one of these Furion cameras. So it actually already has the wiring and everything run to there. We'll take that little dummy cover off and our camera will replace it and be able to plug right in. If you do not have that plastic cover there, then there's another system from Furion that I would recommend that would replace the middle light uh, of those three lights that's underneath the dummy uh, cover for the camera and the camera is actually integrated into that center light so you can just replace that light without having to do any modifications. If you get this kit, you'd have to run your wires and stuff. It would be a big old pain. But the, uh, the other kit uses a wireless camera that just replaces the light. And I actually like that one personally a little bit better, um, mostly because of the layout. If we look at this particular one here, they put the camera right above the uh, light there at the back. So 
once we install this, it is possible that there could be some red glare at night when you have your, your lights on, since the camera is located above the light. On the other system that integrates it into the light, the camera is positioned off to the side in a way that it doesn't get any light pollution from the lights back there. So I kind of like that one a little bit better, um, but this one's easier to install and utilizes the work that was done from the factory for your trailer. So we're gonna go ahead and get that one installed. It'll install way, way easier than any other one because this one's prepared for it. All right, so now that we've identified how our lights operate and the best camera system um, for our system here, we can go ahead and start installing it. Now the two camera systems we talked about, they install extremely similar to one another. Uh, the only difference is the rear camera. So you can follow along with these front cameras um, if that system worked better for you. This is all gonna be the same. So we're gonna remove our light here to start off. I've also unplugged power to it. We don't have any lights lit up here. That way we're not gonna accidentally cause any shorts or anything while we're working. There's a slit here on the side. You can stick a flat bladed screwdriver in and then just give it a little bit of a twist and you can pop that cover off. That'll reveal the two bolts that's located inside here. There are screw heads. You can either use a Phillips or that's a number two square also works in there. We're gonna remove both of these. And then we're gonna just kinda of gently see what kind of wire length that we've got to work with here. And it's feeling fairly tight. Now, luckily on this particular trailer, we can just reach around the underside here to access this. So this is pretty convenient for us here uh, that we can just reach underneath so the wire length doesn't really matter because it's so easy for us to get back here. So we're just gonna now remove our light We'll take a pair of snips here, and we're just gonna cut the two circuits. Now it is a good idea to check to see which circuit is which. Um, I've already done that and checked it, and usually it's fairly obvious based on wire color. If we look here, we've got a yellow and you've got a white, and if you follow the white wire up underneath here where it connects, it'll connect into a big old bundle of white here. And usually when you see these big bundles of white, that's usually ground. You can see this one here is green, which is often uh, for like a running light circuit. So um, the wire color here usually really helps you out. If you need to, you can grab a test probe though and you can just use a test light to see uh, which one's which before you go to cut these wires. But we already know that it's gonna be the colored one is our hot and the white is our ground. So we're just gonna cut these. I'm gonna cut enough off to where we can use the wire here and leave enough so the light could still be used on another project. Maybe this guy's got another trailer. He could potentially move that over to there. So if you leave enough lead on there, uh, still we'll be able to use this light in the future. So we can go ahead and set this aside. Just gonna put the cover back on to protect the light. Now we can go ahead and strip back both of the wires that we had trimmed underneath here. All right, now that we've got both of these stripped, we're gonna put a heat shrink butt connector on the end of these. You can get heat shrink butt connectors here at e-trailer. We do wanna make sure you're using the heat shrink one since this is outside of our trailer here. We don't even have an undershield or anything, so high probability that moisture is gonna be splashing up in this area. So utilizing a heat shrink butt connector like this will allow us to seal up the ends to keep out dirt, debris, and moisture, ensuring a long-lasting connection. So we're just gonna slide our wire into the butt connector there and then crimp it down. We're gonna do the same thing with the white wire that we had also cut. All right, so now we've got our power and our ground prepared here for our camera. Next, we're gonna grab our camera and we're gonna take a look at the wires. There's four wires on there. So we'll discuss those and how we're gonna hook them up. So here we've got our camera. This is what it looks like. This is the one for the passenger side here. So it's gonna install on the side of our trailer like this. Our light there and the camera pointing towards kind of the side and the rear. These are the wires that we need to hook up here. So we've got four. They do have labels on each one of them. So it makes it easier to do so. Our black wires are ground. Our red is our power for the camera. Brown is power for the lamp, the light here, the marker light. And then yellow is a signal wire. And this, the signal wire there is optional. We're gonna, we're gonna hook it up. The way the signal wire works is whenever it receives a voltage on this circuit, it will automatically switch your display to this camera. 
That way you get a full size screen image of what this camera is seeing. And since we're putting this on the passenger side over here, what we would do is hook this to the passenger side turn signal. So that way when they turn their turn signal on, it triggers the camera here and it lets the system know, hey, you're about to you know, make a right turn. This is particularly useful when merging and changing lanes on the highway. So uh, when you hit that turn signal, it lets everybody around you know what your intentions are. And then it turns on this camera with a nice full screen image so you can utilize that with your mirrors and your vehicle to ensure that there's nothing, uh, no obstructions next to you so you can safely merge. So we're gonna hook those up. You can still pull this camera up full screen without hooking up the trigger wire. You would just have to do so using the touch screen on the display. This will allow us to have this become full screen just utilizing the blinker in our vehicle. So that way it's just a little bit more seamless, keeping you nice and safe. So we're gonna run this wire ourselves. So we'll come back to hooking these up here in a minute and we're gonna go ahead and run that wire. So you'll need to source your own wire. Um, doesn't need to be a very thick gauge wire for that trigger there. You could do something like a 22 gauge would even be fine. Uh, so we're gonna see what we got around here in the shop laying around and we're gonna route it from our camera where we're gonna be installing it here. It needs to route over to our junction box. That's typically the easiest place where you're gonna find your turn signal circuits. And our junction box is located over here. So we'll be running it kind of along this inside edge here until we get it to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and route that wire now and then we'll show you kind of the path we took to get it over here. So I've gone ahead and routed that wire. We just decided to go with a brown wire that we had laying around here. I did put a heat shrink butt connector on the end here. It's gonna be by our camera because we're gonna need that to connect to it. From there, we just follow our wiring down. Um, we did do a little wrap there just to help support it. And then we poked it into the loom here. We poked our wire through the hole that was up here. We did have to rip a little bit of insulation out. Then it dropped straight down and there, we poked a little hole in the insulation right down here. We were able to then pull our wire down and then we were able to poke it straight across until it comes out the other side of the frame down through here. And I just used my screwdriver to clean out some insulation and was able to push the wire right on through. Um, if you need to, you may or may not need to use some kind of uh, fish wire to help you with that. Um, if you've got a metal coat hanger at home, those work really well. You can kind of bend it in the shape you need, feed it through there because it's a little more rigid, tape your wire to it, and then use the coat hanger to pull it the rest of the way through. Uh, so if, if you need to, but I, I didn't need to for any of this. It's all pretty open. Um, but there are a couple of spots where you might maybe need to consider it because the insulation is a little thick right there. Um, but I, I was able to poke it through. So now that we got it routed over here towards our box. We'll come back hooking up to the box later. Let's go ahead and get the camera mounted up. Before we wire it, wire it, I'm gonna mount it just because of the length of wire we got here and here. It'll probably be easier for us to just wire it straight on the other side. So you can poke your wires through and then we'll mount it and then we can wire it there. So I'll show you how to get this camera mounted. There's that little, little notch on top, similar to the notch that was on your camera on the side. So your flat bladed screwdriver just goes in there and just give it a little bit of a twist. That'll pop that cover off of there. That'll allow us to access the screw holes inside for mounting. Uh, we can access these two here. We're gonna use the screws that we had removed from here in these two holes, but we need to remove these two screws right here as well. And we're gonna use a different uh, Phillips bit for this. They're smaller, so you need to make sure you have another, a smaller Phillips bit. So we're just gonna remove both of these screws. Don't lose them, they are very small. You're gonna need them to actually get the camera remounted back up on here. That's all this does is it, these two screws secure the camera to the light portion. So we're gonna get the other one out of there. Just set those both down. So now we got both of those removed, the camera just slides out of it like that. And that reveals the other two remaining mounting holes that we've got for our camera here. Now these ones you'll need to provide your own hardware for. Um, the ones that were located here will work as well, but they are a little bit thick on the head. I don't know if you look at the head of the bolt here, they will probably work, but you, you wanna try to find something that has the thinnest button head as possible. So nothing any thicker than this for sure, as far as like the height of the bottom face and the top of the head. Because when it goes through here, our camera is not gonna be able to slide back on if the head is too tall. So we're gonna provide our own hardware for this. I've got some that I know will work. You can get some at your local hardware store uh, in order to install this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our camera through here. Just poke that on in there. 
Here we have our screws that we're gonna be using. So I'll just show you those for comparison. So you can see the head of these two is very similar. The new ones we're using are a little bit wider, but they're also a little bit shorter, not quite as tall. And height is really the biggest factor here. Um, so we're just gonna kinda get this lined up. Making sure our wire's there. We wanna try to cover up the marks of where our other light was. And those also are very helpful and making sure that you get this kind of installed straight because uh, you can just cut, make sure you're covering up that mark. You could also bust out a level if you wanted to, but uh, make sure your trailer's level if you're gonna be doing that. I usually just try to match it up with curves with straight lines on the trailer, just in case the ground here isn't perfectly level. So now that we've got, <clears throat> got it lined up, we're gonna drop one of our bolts, our screws down in there, and we're gonna run it into place. And there we go. And these have to be self-tapping screws since we're going through the metal. And we're just going right through the metal. And we, after this first screw's in here, we can then adjust the tilt of our camera if it moved a little bit when you were uh, setting it up there. So we can tweak this as necessary to make sure it's lining up down the side of our trailer. And that's looking pretty uniform with our trailer right there. So we'll run our other bolt in now. And then the shorter ones here for our other holes. After screwing those in, our camera will slide back together like that. And then you can reinstall the small screws that hold these pieces together. So now that we've got our light installed, we'll just snap our lens cover back into place. And then we can head underneath and get our wires hooked up. All right, so now we're down here. We're gonna wire up our light now. So we'll start with our power circuit. It's labeled there V positive camera. We also want the light to come on when the camera is powered. So we're gonna take the one labeled V positive traffic lamp. We're just gonna take the, these are pre-stripped, so I already pulled that one off. They just pull off of there just like that. We're gonna twist the brown and red together because we want both of these to receive power at the same time so that we when our light lights up, our camera turns on and it's ready to display images for us. So we're gonna twist both of those together like that. And then there's quite a bit of excess on here. So we're gonna get rid of some of that. Just come up in here and trim off what you don't need. And we'll just twist it up, any of the excess there. And we can poke this into our butt connector for power. And we know that's the factory wire that we had cut the positive one that's this green circuit that went to the yellow wire here so we'll just slide our wire up into our butt connector there and then we'll crimp these down all right now that we've got that connected we're going to move on to our ground circuit which is just the black wire labeled gnd for ground so that's nice and simple Trim off our excess here. That'll hook to the white wire here. That was our ground for our factory light that we had removed. So just slide that up in there. And then once again, we're gonna crimp that down. And lastly, we have our trigger wire here. And that's gonna be the yellow one here, labeled trigger signal. So we'll slide that off of there, twist this wire, trim off our excess, and this will hook to the wire that we are running over to the junction box. So we'll just trim off the excess here. And then we can slide our wire we routed with the butt connector on it, on top of there. And then we just need to crimp these two down. All right. So now that we've got all of our wires connected here on the camera, 
We'll repeat the same process on the other side to get that light installed. And you're gonna to wanna to run your own trigger wire over to the junction box over there. We're gonna go ahead and grab our heat gun here so we can shrink these down. And then after that, we're gonna to head to our junction box to hook up those trigger wires there. If you need a heat gun, you can get one here at E-Trailer. Along with the heat shrink butt connectors, crimpers, we've got all the tools that you'll need here to complete this job. All right, so I went ahead and got our wires inside of our box now. Where we came out of the hole here, we routed it down and into the box. I did have to kind of push the wires through here. It's not easy to get your wires to pass through there. Um, this piece, you can try to pull it out a little bit to give yourself a little more room, but they typically don't want to come out very, hard, very far. Um, but I did put a pair of pliers on it, kind of snugged on it a little bit and was able to get the wires to poke through. Uh, the brown wire you're seeing, I mean, sorry, the yellow wire you're seeing here is the trigger wire that we ran from the camera on the driver's side. We already got that driver's side over there and installs the same. We just chose a different colored wire to make things easier. The path we routed it is almost identical to this one. It routes almost the same. The only difference is, is when we come out the hole that's over on the driver's side here, we just routed it along the bottom until we made it over to this side. So we, there we got both of our trigger wires in here. So now we need to figure out which wires we're gonna be hooking these to. We need the passenger side camera to hook to the passenger turn signal, the right side turn, and we need the driver side camera to hook to the driver side turn signal, or the left turn. So we're gonna figure out which ones those are now. So you may need to, uh, to plug your truck in. We're gonna use our test box here. And let's see if we, hopefully this box here will give us a good enough ground. If not, there's some self-tapping screws along the bottom here. We can try to clip on to get a good ground. All right, so now we got our test light here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the test box. And we've got our driver side turn signal on. So now we're just gonna poke in here into these wires and see if we can figure out which one is our driver side turn. It's probably this red one here. Let's take a look. Yep, that's the red one there. So you can see our light on off with our signal there. So we know the red wire is our driver side. I'm gonna go ahead and change our test box here to the passenger side now so we can identify the passenger side circuit. And that is probably this brown one here. And it is right there. There's our uh, passenger side blinking circuit, our turn signal circuit. So we know we've identified both of those now. We don't need to, you don't need your truck or your test box anymore. We know this is driver's side and we know this one over here is passenger side. So now we just gotta add our wires right into that. So the way we're gonna do that is with heat shrink butt connectors. Once again, we're switching up to the yellow size here because we're gonna be having to put multiple wires in one side. Uh, this one's got an extra large opening for 10 to 12 gauge wires. So it should accommodate a couple of wires nicely. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kinda getting the length that I want figured out. We're gonna trim off some of this excess there. Now we're just gonna take our wire here and we just need to splice into it. So you can choose either side. We're gonna go ahead and choose, I think this side, just cause the wire's a little bit thinner on this side. So it'll be easier to add a wire to it into our butt connector. So we're simply now just gonna cut the circuit here, give ourselves enough excess on each side to be able to strip the wires back. Strip them back on this side. We'll strip it back on the other side. Okay, now we've got those stripped on each side. Go ahead and give them a little bit of a twist. And we can start adding our wires together. I think I'm gonna add the wire over here to this side, like this. So we'll trim off the excess from there. And we're going to strip this wire back. And then just twist these two circuits together here. 
slide it into our heat shrink butt connector. Crimp down our butt connector on the other side of our butt connector. We are simply just going to reattach it back to the brown wire that we had cut it from here. All right. So that takes care of our passenger side trigger wire there. Now our, our driver side trigger, we know it was the red one. So we're gonna do it pretty similarly. We're gonna take our red wire here, trim it back. Trim that back. We'll trim our yellow wire back. Take our butt connector, put it on there. I'm going to crimp this down. And then the other side of our butt connector here, we're just going to reconnect back to the red wire. I'm going to strip it back still. All right, we've got our connections made in there for our trigger wire. So Grab our heat gun now and shrink down these butt connectors. After you've got all your connections made in here, we can poke all of our wires back in here. They're just kind of haphazardly stuffed in here, so we're going to basically do the same thing to get them back in. Just kind of force them all in there. They will all fit. We didn't add that much. There we go. The cover when we removed it, all we did was we loosened those up right there because you just simply need to loosen them and this cover just slides right off of there. Kind of like that. So we just slide it back on and now we'll tighten those back down. All right, so now that we've got those tightened down, we can Go ahead and operate your lights if you still got your truck hooked up so you can just verify that the lights are working on your cameras. Um, and then we can head on to the back to get that last camera installed. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on our test light there for our running lights. We can see that it illuminates the light here and on the other side it lights up as well. Now, if you checked your lights at the beginning when we talked about checking them and the function of this light ended up being a turn signal, um, I highly recommend to make it a running light the way we hooked it up and hook it up the way we did you can easily change that over if you still want this light to blink as a turn signal uh, so it worked like it did before then you would hook it to the power wire that's here would be a blinking power wire and instead of hooking the camera to the light circuit you'd actually hook the trigger wire to the light circuit so that way the blinking signal would work your light as a blinker and would also trigger the camera that you've got your blinker on. You would then need to run your own wire for the camera power over to your box and hook it to the tail light circuit. You would check your circuitry the same way we did where we turned to hook your truck up, operate your lights and use your test light and just see whichever one is lit only when the tail light's on. So what I would do if I was you checking this is you want to check those circuits while the tail lights are on you see it, have an assistant you can get out and turn them off yourself and then make sure that that's that circuit is no longer illuminated. It should only light up when the tail lights are on. So you could do it like that if you need to. Um, but in most cases, I would just recommend wiring this up how we did and just changing yours over from a turn signal to a marker light. So everything seems to be working properly here. We can go ahead and head back to our rear camera now and get that one hooked up. So here we are at the back of the trailer. This is the prep that we were telling you about to look for to see if you got it. Here's our new camera right here. And you might be thinking we're gonna take this off of here and put this on there, but actually, this has already been sealed to your trailer. So why bust the seal when, uh, when the manufacturer's taking care of that for us? We can actually just take the camera module portion out of the housing. We don't need the whole housing. So there's four screws here. We're gonna remove these four screws and that's gonna remove a plate to allow us to install our camera. Now, if you didn't have one of these, you would have to drill your own holes use the cover that comes provided with your kit, seal it all up, 
Um, but again, that's why I recommended the other kit because the one that's got the camera built into this light is way easier and more enjoyable to install than this kit if you don't have a prep. Again, we got a prep, so this is gonna be easy for us. It's gonna be really nice. Get all four of these out of there. They are very small too, try not to lose them. You do get four with your new camera, so if you happen to lose one here, you know, you got some extras, but. They're tiny, so you can lose them real fast. All right, so now that we've got all those removed, the cover just pops off. You can use the little kind of hole there to help pull it out. That's where our antenna is going to poke through. And here is the factory wiring that they routed for us, making our job nice and easy. So if you were going to install this yourself, this is the wiring here. You can see it's at the same end. You would route this up to uh, a battery source um, of your choosing. A lot of times people hook it to the reverse light circuit so that way when you put it in reverse it turns your camera on but there are a lot of people that want to be able to watch what's going on behind their trailers or going down the road um, it just depends what you're planning on doing if you want to be able to see all the time behind you you could hook this directly to the trailers uh, it's like a running light circuit or something like that so it's just on when the running lights are on that's all up to you um, but we're going to go ahead and just plug our camera into the factory wiring there since it was already run we do have to remove the screws from here so there's four screws, they're in the same locations, and then we can pop the camera assembly out of this housing, because again, we don't need to install this housing since they've got it sealed up nice for us here. So I'm gonna remove those real quick. It's a little bit easier for me to do down here and right in front of me. So once I get these screws out, I'll show you uh, how to pull the camera out of this housing. So I got all the screws out. Simply just slide your camera right out of the housing. We can set the housing down, we don't need that. We just need our camera here. The antenna does come not installed. I, I put it on there. You just screw it on. I just find it a little bit easier to have it on there now. It kind of gives you a little bit of a handle and stuff to work with. Don't go too crazy with it. Uh, it is somewhat fragile, but I like having it there. So in the end of our uh, plug there, there's this little cap. Pulled the cap out of it. And then we can take our camera, plug it right into that connector. Just kind of poke our wiring up inside of the open cavity there. And then slide your camera into the housing. Just like that there. And now we're just gonna reinstall all of our screws. For the most part, it holds itself up in there pretty nicely while you're working. Obviously, you don't want to drive around like this, it wouldn't hold, but reinstalling your screws. And yeah, we're just running them all back in now. Don't go too crazy tight with these, it's all plastic. And they are fairly small screws, so they would strip out pretty easily. So just kind of go until it's snug, and then I'm stopping there. That's good enough. It's not going anywhere. And yeah, this is the, definitely the best way to do it here if you've got this prep, because this way we don't have to worry about any kind of moisture entering in our cab or anything. They've got that all sealed up for us. After we get this last screw in here, we can then just adjust our antenna and our camera. So you got tilts there that you can choose between, whichever is the best for you. This looks like it's probably a pretty good angle right there. Your antenna, you can twist and tilt that as you like. I think that'll probably work out pretty well, something like that. All right, so at this point now, we're ready to go grab our monitor. Um, you can hook up your truck as well, so that way we can verify your trigger wires are working properly. So that's probably the best thing to do next is to just go ahead and hop in your truck with your monitor and plug it in and we'll go through some features. Um, due to the lack of space here in the shop, we're just going to plug our monitor into a power source just from, to our test box, and that'll light up our monitor. Um, and then we can use our test box to actually apply the turn signals from, uh, from the vehicle to our trailer here. Because this is a big boy, so the truck and trailer don't quite fit together in here. So here we've got our monitor. We plugged it into our test box here to power it up, and we turned on the running lights on our trailer. That should power up all of our cameras so we can cycle through them and see how they're working.
I'm gonna go ahead and peel the sticker off of the display there. And currently we're looking at the rear view camera here. Um, if we select on the screen, that'll allow us to select which camera we want. So if we want to see it on the left side of our trailer, we can click that and see it on the left side. If we want to see it on the right side, we can click that and we can see it on the right side. And that completes our installation of Furion's three camera system on our 2018 Heartland Torque.